Now to the macros, Manish Dangi, founder of Macro Mosaic Investing and Research, is with us on the show now. Uh, Manish, morning. First call on the US now. Given the strong blowout jobs data and now the stronger than expected inflation number, the rise in the US 10-year bond yields to levels of 4.5% plus. What's the US macro setup looking like, according to you, and what should we expect in the next 12 months? So US, US data has been a bit of a disappointment for any uh, good uh, macro cyclical trader. It's been a basket case. Uh, had, the country economy hasn't disinflated in the last two, three months. There's been a significant uh, disappointment on the inflation side. Growth has sort of steadied at longer than average of about 2%. So now it's so divergent from what is happening in the rest of the world. You know, even the adjacent countries like Canada, most OECD countries have had decent disinflation. The growth has actually uh, has declined. Uh, the forecast has declined over the last uh, six, eight months. So in some sense, you know, US is turning out to be a sort of a basket case for such a large country to behave so differently. Uh, and as you said, you know, the job data has been very, very strong. For four, five months ago, sort of it appeared, given job losses, uh, that a SAM rule would kick in. And, you know, by June, July, US would enter in significant slowdown, if not recession. But, you know, a lot of those calls have been pushed away. So if you're a pure cyclical trader, you know, it's likely that such high real rates eventually would begin to hurt economy. But uh, if if you are a data watcher, then uh, yet there is nothing significant to suggest that the U.S. is slowing in a meaningful fashion. You know, uh, Manish, hi. Uh, good morning. Great to have you on the show. Which is why I ask you. I mean, this entire narrative around, and even though I mean, the Fed's fueled the narrative, right? Uh, you know, why put it on anyone else? Saying that uh, three rate cuts are very much on the table for this year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this narrative is happening at a time when just look at real prices around you. I mean, cocoa, crude. Coffee, gold, uh, I mean, anything and everything, metals, I mean, all of these commodities are shooting uh, higher and higher, multi-year highs for many of them. So, uh, you know, against this backdrop, and then we had the consumer inflation numbers in the US, right? And they were hotter than expected. So somewhere are the equity markets going a little off the charts in terms of reading the reality and maybe the bond market, I mean, the US tenure at 4.5% is calling it uh, more accurately. Uh, so, a couple of things. One, of course, is what is more paradoxical is that uh, metals, crude, everyone is rising, even when actually dollar is strengthening. Gold is rising and dollar is strengthening. Real rates are like super elevated. So, in some sense, it's it's a macro that ha you haven't seen for a very, very long time. Uh, as far as uh, equities and bonds are concerned, sort of they're pointing at something similar, uh, which is like no landing scenario. Um, equity sort of are suggesting that while well, there could be some slowdown, but um, there are not going to be significant cuts. The fact that in the last few days, uh, bonds have actually sold off more than equities sort of tells you that uh, in general, the view is, is that, you know, there could be some pinching because of high yields, but, uh, but it's not going to hurt economy enough for uh, to one to have sort of a significant uh, earning recession, so to say. So, in some sense, both equities and bonds have actually converged. They're not as divergent as they were, I mean, throughout 2022 or even 23. Okay, so now let's bring this uh, back home to India and where we stand against the larger global context that you just described. Because, I mean, the, the last policy was absolute status quo. Then there's this expectation that because of our, uh, you know, global bond index inclusions, we'll have so much money coming in that, you know, yields should remain pretty benign here. At least that's, you know, that's the last narrative that I heard. Do you subscribe to that? And again, how does this sort of uh, hold against the backdrop of uh, slightly higher elevated US yields, elevated inflation, etc.? So for, for Indian yields, so far um, Indonesian, so far Chinese, you know, the only sort of worry is, and it is a significant worry of the trifecta of higher dollar, higher USD and higher crude. As I said, it's a bit of a 2022 uh, um, sort of a global macro setup, at least the U.S. macro setup, so to say. But then Asia, uh, across uh, across Asia, I mean, I mean, China is at, actually at cyclical lows in terms of yield. In, in five years, of course, now the COVID effect has faded. Uh, Chinese rates are about 150 basis point lower. Indonesian rates are about 150 basis point lower when the U.S. is actually 200, 250 basis point higher. India rates are flat. Uh, India hasn't had a significant cyclical slowdown in terms of growth so far. Last two months have been decent. But Indian inflation actually has been, has been adjacent to what Asia has seen. 
And so to some extent, uh, you have sort of all levers in place uh, which will drive uh, sort of bond yields lower over the next one to two years. Okay, to summarize, if you're a bond trader, uh, then you have to have fixed stop losses because in the wake of $90 of crude and $105 of DXY and four and a half of USD, you know, you really can't put on a very large uh, position uh, long bonds, you know, so you have to be very, very careful. But if you're an investor, then uh, these are sort of very attractive yields and very likely that in the next one to two years, you know, my view remains that uh, we will we will sort of have a significant both dis disinflation as well as lower yields. And that would mean uh, that there will be a return parity in equities and bonds. So from an investor point of view who doesn't sort of bother much about, you know, a few weeks and months of sort of uh, obstacles, you know, there is a decent uh, decent case to make that uh, it's a long gone trade. Mm. How are the macros looking, Manish, of the other emerging markets? Um, do you look at it carefully? So, so basically, again, uh, you know, what's, what matters more is, uh, to us, at least, is Asia. And, uh, mm. uh, and uh, what has happened post-COVID, you know, so it's sort of, it's, as I said, you know, it's interesting to compare what, what was in 2019, pre-COVID, and now, given that all COVID effects have faded in 2024, uh, you've had very, very divergent outcome. You know, in Asia, you have significantly lower inflation impulse uh, than what we used to have, including in India. Um, and, and so therefore, the bond sort of impulse is to go lower and lower, uh, and, and which wasn't the case uh, in 2018-19, if you remember, you know, a little bit of a perk up in crude, and we saw uh, sort of bond yield shooting off everywhere, you know, not just in India, but at the end. So... So from an emerging market point of view, I think there is a lot of disinflation. The growth impulse is weak. And uh, and therefore, it's sort of a, a primarily a yield play instead of a growth play. Okay. All right. Got that. Uh, we are in a conundrum. Macros are not what they usually are. But as you're saying, I haven't seen this in a while. Thank you very much for making sense of it all. I uh, really appreciate you being with us on the show today. We will take a break. On that note, come back on the other side and we'll uh, put the spotlight on the defence sector. Nirmal Bang has uh, come out with a very detailed report on the sector, the opportunities that the listed space is throwing up. So the authors of the report, Jyoti Gupta and former CMD of BEML, Deepak Hota, will join in for some perspective.